So, we get in the middle of 1960, and uh, I. The first radio programs I did were on a station called WRR in, uh, in Dallas, and uh, they had a rhythm and blues program called Cat's Caravan, spelled inevitably with two Ks. And um, I'd got some uh, British you know, LPs uh, uh, that were only available, of, of blues, rhythm and blues stuff that were only available in, in Britain or in Europe anyway. And so I went along and uh, played for some of those records to put me on the radio to talk about them. I thought they'd probably put me on there because uh, of my extraordinary knowledge of the music, but I think, in fact, they'd probably put me on there because uh, uh, they found my accent very entertaining, because in those days I used to talk like a bit like Prince Charles. Not the day, you know, not immediately before uh, Lee Harvey Oswald was shot, it's a few days before that, but it's when uh, he was kind of presented to the press as being the man who'd been uh, uh, arrested and charged, you know. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was, I mean, it's just one of those things that uh, uh, earlier on, um, when the assassinate, you know, when this had first happened, and I'd been, uh, I, I used to work here for an insurance company on uh, Central Expressway, so obviously I could get into town pretty quickly and uh, I was an office boy so I could come and go as, as, as I pleased really you know and uh, so when I heard about the assassination it was announced on the kind of PA in the house in the office you know and I, I, I just drove into town and uh, went to the police court and, and, and uh, told the policeman I said I'm, I'm from the Liverpool Echo and uh, instead of telling me to piss off he, he let me through and it, it's one of those things which just sounds so bizarre but uh, and I walked down, I, you know, I didn't go over onto the grass in Knoll, but I stood on the other side of the, the road and, and kind of watched what was going on until, frankly, it became boring, you know. I mean, it's hard to imagine that uh, it did, but I mean, after you stood there for about 40 minutes and what you were scurrying about, um, you know, so I, went, I then went and uh, uh, made what I'd said kind of retrospectively true and phoned the, the, the Liverpool Echo. And, uh, you know, they weren't, from there, they weren't terribly interested. I thought, great, this is my chance, because I'd always wanted to be in journalism, sort of, hey, this is my chance to get into journalism, you know, I could be the Liverpool Echoes man in Dallas, but they really didn't care, <laughs> so uh, uh, I was a bit wounded by that. But then that night, a mate of mine and I, we'd been driving around, you know, and uh, trying to figure out what to do, and at the end of the evening, I said, why don't we go down to the police headquarters and see what's going on, and we got down there, and I said to this uh, policeman, I said, you know, what's, what's happening, and he said, well, actually, there's a press conference down here, wanting to sort of fly the steps into the basement of the building, and, um, there's a press conference in here, you know, in a few minutes. And I said, oh, well, I'm, I said, actually, I'm from the Liverpool Echo. And I said, he's my photographer. <laughs> and uh, we went down there. I mean, we haven't got a pen or paper or camera between us, but uh, we went in there anyway. And it's a story that I've told so often, you know, that you get to the point where you don't really believe it yourself, you know, it just seems so unlikely. But then in uh, one of the bits of film of the uh, of that press conference where they, you know, sort of, but we were all standing in this in this room and they have the identification parade in the basement of the building. And uh, they said, uh, Henry Wade said, you know, that this is the man who's been charged with the assassination of President Kennedy. And they brought in Lee Harvey Oswald and he stood there kind of looking slightly puzzled and alarmed for a while and then was taken away again. But they, uh, they in one of the films of this, which they showed on British television, they showed that Jack Ruby was in the room as well, which I didn't know he was until I, until I saw this film. But... Uh, they sort of panned across the room, and in the last few frames, you can see me and my friend Bob standing there looking, uh, uh, you know, like, like tourists. None at all, no, I wish, I, I mean, I, you know, uh, I think, um, I mean, I know everybody does, but uh, I think we'll probably never know the 